Well, I wasn't sure if I was gonna talk about this or not, getting my new smile. And uh, I had mentioned in a couple videos that I'd had some dental work done, uh, mainly because in one, my lip was still puffy, and, and in like a couple after, it, I like I felt like it was very lispy the way I was talking. So I felt like I had to give a disclaimer. But today, I'll show you what it is that I had done and what I learned through the process that was incredibly humbling. Well, hi, I'm Dawn from The Minimal Mom. Normally on Sundays, joined by my twin sister, Diana, especially on the first day of Advent, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. She wasn't feeling well, and so we decided better to be safe than sorry, um, but we will talk about Advent uh, coming up in a few minutes, but I wanted to answer this question. There was a question, well, there's been several questions now that have come up about what did you have done to your teeth because they do look a little bit different. Uh, there was a comment that said, what did you do? They look fake. <laughs> and so I don't usually read those comments, but my wonderful husband will sometimes sit at the table and read them to me. And so <laughs> YouTube actually does a really good job now. I don't know if you've noticed, probably not because y'all are so kind, but like the snarky comments get put down to the bottom. If they, they say they can sense tone in comments, it's awesome. And so those, anything like critical or unkind, usually goes to the bottom now. I don't go to the bottom looking for them, but somebody else in our household does. So anyways, but I did have some dental work done uh, over the last few weeks because uh, I was, well, both Diane and I, which is funny, we're identical twins, were not born with uh, some permanent teeth on the top and on the bottom. And so I had had a flipper or like a retainer with extra teeth on it um, on the top. And in the bottom, I did have a permanent bridge, um, but we didn't necessarily want to do that on the top for longevity and everything. And so um, I, had, I had not had that done. So for 12 years, uh, we had been waiting to do something permanent. All, a lot of information that you don't, if this isn't interesting, I, like you can skip ahead or we'll see you in the next video. That's totally fine. So I did take some video though. So here was day one of the procedure. Oh, all right, I just got to the dentist for uh, phase one of fixing my front teeth. So I'll document this real quick. I'll show you. I don't have these two teeth. So I've just, I should have warned you if that's gross. If you get grossed out easily, don't look at this. So uh, I was born without those teeth there. Same on the bottom. I have a bridge on the bottom. But on the top, we've been needing a permanent solution for over 12 years. <laughs> but So today is a four-hour appointment where they're going to do the first step of putting six crowns across the front of my teeth. So uh, here we go. I'm, I'm not too nervous because I've just had a lot of dental stuff done before. And so I'm grateful for that. I don't get too stressed out about it. I have my earbuds. I'm gonna hopefully just try and listen to music the whole time and we'll just see how it goes. So here's, I mean, long story short, I know some of you are like more interested in like dental stuff than others, but um, we had had braces early on uh, when we were teenagers to make sure these gaps were big enough to put some kind of like a dental implant in there because the problem when you don't have permanent teeth come in is that then the gaps weren't big enough. They were just big enough for the baby teeth that were in there. So we had had braces. Um, we didn't do the implants right away because they were so expensive. So my poor parents were in high school and they're having to pay for both Diana and I to have something done here. So we went with Marilyn Bridges at the time, which is, uh, you know, it's a tooth that goes in that gap and then it attaches to the to each side on the other teeth And so they had etched the back. They don't do this anymore But at the time this was the best solution And so they had etched the back of the teeth on each side and put like big grooves in them To attach these bridges which would make them hold on better. So it was good but um, you know, we were 16 at the time. It wasn't the best long-term solution. So then uh, we get into our early 20s. We're looking at doing permanent dental implants, which would be the best solution. Um, and Diana did go ahead and have that done. And so uh, they ended up telling us that we had to have braces on again because the gaps weren't big enough. And so we had braces on again so they could make the gaps bigger. And then Diana went ahead and once she got her braces off, did have go ahead and have the implants put in. For me, I got my braces off 
just in time for Tom and I to get married. And so it was right leading up to uh, our wedding that I still had braces on. And so like the countdown was on and we kept like talking to my orthodontist, like, can we have these off in time for the wedding? And so we were able to do that. He had said like, we could just take the front ones off and you can get married and we'll put them back on. Um, but he felt that by the time our wedding came, it was fine. So they took the braces off. They gave me that temporary flipper or retainer with the fake teeth on it. And that was meant to be a temporary solution until I went ahead and had the dental implants done however those are very expensive <laughs> and so we had I mean we didn't have the money right away when we first got married but then also I started having kids and I just didn't want to go through all of that's involved with those procedures while we were having kids and so here we were now <laughs> 10 years later, 12 years later, and I'd still been wearing this temporary flipper, um, which it didn't bother me. Like aesthetically, it was fine. Nobody noticed. Uh, it was totally fine. The problem we were running into though is that it was very hard on my teeth on the inside and I was getting cavities from that and when I would eat food would get stuck there and um, so it was very hard on my teeth to always be wearing that retainer. It wasn't that uh, retainer was not meant to be worn long term the way I was doing it. So I went back to the dentist and we started exploring the options um, and we decided because my teeth had been damaged on the top from those Maryland bridges that we were going back and forth between doing dental implants or another form of bridge. Um, and so because those teeth had been damaged, we knew even if we did the dental implants that I would still have to have a lot of repair work done to those other teeth. And so, and the other thing was that the bone structure up here was not strong enough to just put the implants in on its own. We would have had to do a bone graft on each side. And so um, we decided, given all of the information and also Diana's experience with her implants, that we were gonna go ahead and do bridges, which looks like crowns on the teeth on the sides. So in essence, I ended up with six crowns across the front here that then made those bridges, but it allowed them to also fix these teeth or cover them up basically. And basically they could engineer what my smile would look like then, right? So, but what also happened during this was that I have a molar that I'd had a crown put on seven years ago. I had a crack in that molar. Ever since I had that crown, it was always uncomfortable. It was always hot and cold sensitive. That never went away. Usually that would go away. Uh, if I would bite on it wrong, it would hurt. And so that tooth had always kind of given me some problems, but you know, like we do, you just keep going, right? It's just, it is what it is. All right, I just finished. It actually, <laughs> my lip is totally numb, so I can't really talk. Um, I still have my retainer in, so these are just temporary crowns until I come back in two weeks. He said that um, because of the virus stuff, they're a little behind in making permanent crowns, so he's hoping it'll be done in two weeks, but doesn't know for sure. So so uh, I'm just going to hope it's done <laughs> in two weeks and yeah. But in between these two procedures of getting like the temporary crowns on and everything, and when I was supposed to go back to have the permanent crowns put on. I started having blinding pain in this tooth and uh, so finally went in and they were like, we think you have to have a root canal. Um, I've researched a lot about root canals. I know they're not always the best option, but ended up going ahead and having a root canal then in between this. Uh, also, it was when Corbin chipped his front tooth. <laughs> and so during this whole time, I just started to feel like, Lord, like why are we having all these dental problems? And honestly, even throughout like growing up and like having these issues with like missing teeth, I mean, there's so many times I've thought like, wow, if we would have just been born with those teeth, do you know how much money we would have saved and how much pain and suffering <laughs> we could have just totally bypassed, right? But here's what's so crazy is that, so then during this, I just kind of, you know, would mention to other people or I would apologize for like how I was talking or that my teeth looked really yellow during this. And I started to hear the stories of what some of you have been through with dental things and two people that are very close to me. Uh, I heard stories of how like they, they, genetically they had very soft tooth enamel and it caused them to have to have 
many of their teeth pulled out and uh, or like really bad gum regression that caused all kinds of problems or a friend who has a daughter with a genetic disease that that causes her to teeth to be loose and to fall out and and so through the process I was like oh my goodness what am I complaining about <laughs> right I mean like all of this stuff I'm having done is fixable, right? It was expensive. I did not want to have to pay for a root canal also while doing all this other stuff, right? Or I know a lot of friends that would like to have dental work done, but that can't because it is so stinking expensive, right? I am so grateful for dentists and everything that they do, but it is very expensive. In fact, that's part of the reason we had been putting this off was that because it was a pre-existing condition, our insurance didn't cover it unless you were with them for like two years, right? And it was like every time we got to that point where our insurance would cover it, <laughs> the employer would switch the dental insurance and then we had to start over again. And so we just this fall got to the point where it was covered again. So they covered half of it, which praise the Lord that we had that insurance and they covered that because that was what made it possible even this time around, right? And so it was just very humbling going through this, realizing that in the grand scheme, my dental stuff is nothing compared to what many people around me have gone through. All, and also even when I was going through the pain of needing the root canal, realizing that so many people live with chronic pain and realizing how it makes everything you do so difficult, right? And so it was, it was very eye-opening and it was not at all what I expected <laughs> to learn through this process at all. All right, I am back at the dentist um, to get my crowns on. I'm excited because these temporaries they were kind of darker and he told me they weren't going to look super great. Um, but also the retainer has not fit well the last like week and a half. And so I've been very self-conscious when I'm talking and it kind of sounds like I have a lisp. Um, so I'm excited to get this done. I'm also really nervous <laughs> right now. Uh, it's a lot of money we're spending today and I just want it to look good. I don't, it doesn't have to look awesome. I don't have to look like a movie star, but I trust them. I, I think it is going to look good, but I'm just, I'm really nervous right now. So Oh, here we go. But here I am now on the other side and I have the new crowns in place and uh, my root canal has been done so that feels better and I'm getting used to speaking now with not having that retainer and that was a big adjustment uh, learning how to speak without having that in my mouth and so I'm adjusting to that and so um, it's been it's been good and I'm grateful now to have all this done and I realize now too because you know I think a lot of us when when we're feeling okay, when like we don't feel like life's been beating us down or we've lost hope, we I think most of us can be in that mindset of like, you know, even despite what we have going on right now, we still got it pretty good, right? But it's amazing how when we start to lose hope that it can be really difficult to keep that perspective. So today is the first day of Advent. And like I said, normally Diana would be here, <laughs> Pastor Diana, uh, my twin sister Diana, to lead us into this Advent season. So I'm very disappointed that she's not here right now. She'll be back next week and we'll talk more about it. But I do want to encourage you to find some kind of Advent study to follow. So uh, She Reads Truth does one. Uh, there's another one, uh, Lisa Turkers app. I'll, I'll find the link and, and link it down below. If you use the Version Bible, they had Advent series or I had shown a number of different devotionals that we can purchase specifically for the Advent series. But each week of Advent, and Advent again is just the four weeks leading up to Christmas, different denominations celebrate it a little bit differently. I know uh, we were raised Catholic, which we're so grateful for, and they were very intentional about the different weeks of Advent and lighting the candle, and I thought that was so cool. And my friend Mary Beth, uh, she actually has a channel called the At What Cost blog, and she talks about faith but also about simple living and minimalism. She just did, recently did a great video on one year of minimalism. And so I'll link to that down below in her channel if you're looking for a little more like Bible study and faith-based uh, content. But uh, she is doing it, uh, uncovering the names of Jesus because it really does specifically go through Advent with your family and what each week signifies. But week one of Advent is about hope. Week two is peace and then love and joy. But this week is all about hope. And I do think if we can find a way to restore hope, it does make it easier to maintain this perspective of, you know what? everything not everything's going right in my life right now but I still have it pretty good and so 
I'm not gonna, I don't feel super, I, I don't feel super qualified <laughs> to talk about this, but I can read uh, something from someone much, much wiser than myself. And this uh, was written on Saturday by Dutch Sheets. And he says, uh, hope for the journey. Jeremiah 29 11 says, I know the plans I have for you to give you a future and a hope. In this challenging season, many people are looking for hope. Life can be difficult and at times brutal. A pandemic has stolen jobs and destroyed the dreams of many, ravaging the health of some and taking the lives of others. The country has an underlying sense of unrest. When we experience fear and even at times disillusionment, we grow thirsty for the sustaining force of hope. Hope is to the soul what water is to the body and enables us to overcome the pain of loss and the paralyzing power of fear. Never underestimate the power of hope. Hebrews 6.9 calls it an anchor of the soul. Hope becomes your lifeline, your stabilizer, the strength for your soul. You are not at the mercy of life's unpredictable winds and currents. Your storm won't destroy you. You will win. Through the power of hope and its ability to connect you to God, your song will be restored. Hope is powerful because it is the starting line, the incubator where faith is formed. We are in a season where our hope has been challenged and our faith sorely tried. But the Lord says to us, hope, arise, soul, be restored. Do not be weary in your well-doing for you will reap, but you must not become disillusioned or feel beaten down. I say, refreshing comes from my presence. Rise up, soul. Receive strength for the journey while in the presence of the Lord. It's a time of living in the secret place, my friends, keeping ourselves strong for this journey. Now may God, the inspiration and fountain of hope, fill you to overflowing with uncontainable joy and perfect peace as you trust in Him. And may the power of the Holy Spirit continually surround your life with His superabundance until you radiate with hope. Hope faith and peace are garments that we must wear in this journey. I thought that was so good and so encouraging. I'll link to that down below too. So if you want to read through it again, or if you want to find any of those scripture references. So again, this season, I don't know that it matters what Advent <laughs> devotional or plan that you do. Diana and I have also really been enjoying this um, podcast called The Bible Recap, and it's just 10 minutes a day. It starts at the beginning of the Bible and goes through. I would say don't try and go back and catch up. Just jump in where they're at. Um, but that has been really life-giving as well and a great resource. So I'll, I'll link to that as well. But I think it's just important that we are staying connected right now so that our hope <laughs> can... I mean, I, I don't know about you. I feel like it has to be renewed on on a daily basis. <laughs> so I do think it's important to have these resources and to also surround us with people that are hopeful because uh, not everybody is hopeful or positive <laughs> right now. We still need to be around, like we, we need to impart hope and encourage others too, but we also need the people that are going to uh, build us back up and, and help re restore our soul <laughs> as well. So here is, I'm gonna read his prayer. I'm not gonna do my own, but I'm gonna read his prayer as well. Lord, I thank you that you are my anchor, my strong tower, my place of defense. The storms of life will not knock me down. I will be stronger, learning how to fight back, tapping into your plans for me. I may not see the answer, but I choose to lean back and rest on you, the one who will never let me down. I put my eyes on Jesus and I cast my care on you. You wrap your loving arms around me and help me stand tall when opposed by the fierce winds. Your words, Lord, are like cold water on a hot day, filling and refreshing my soul. I will drink deeply of you and your words finding refreshment in your presence. So we bless everyone watching in the name of Jesus. Amen.